Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My dear family in Christ, my name is Mary Tabata, and I bring blessings to you and peace from the one we call Abba and from his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. I had the opportunity last fall to visit Washington, D.C. for the very first time and to stand at the Lincoln Memorial where our brother, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. stood and proclaimed his dream. And I will tell you that it has been a really long time since I have stood in front of a congregation to speak, freeform at all. Though for those of you who knew me in my previous work as a professional volunteer in the church, you know it's something I'm comfortable doing. I want to thank Vicar Natalie and Pastor Jim in St. Paul's for extending this very special invitation and giving me a chance to speak about something that I haven't spoken about formally before. And while what I share with you this morning is relevant to me and to my journey, it is in many ways very different from where I started out low those many years ago when I first met my sister Agnes McLean at Campus Ministry at UNC. I'm here to speak to some extent about my experience as an Asian American Christian woman. And I realized as I was reflecting on this that my son's experience as a Christian woman is my experience as an Asian American Christian woman because the ethnic identity I hold is not bifurcated from my other experiences. I am who I am, and that is 100% of the time. So I'll tell you a bit about my journey as a Christian, keeping in mind that it bears similarity to other journeys, and my realization as an Asian American of the particularities of my story. I was baptized a Presbyterian through no fault of any of us. <laughs> <laughs> I remember standing at the font in Westminster Presbyterian Church in the mid 1960s, probably a year or two after my next oldest brother had died, succumbing to a heart defect at the age of 14. I later found out that in camp, the euphemism unaffectionately applied to the locations where Japanese Americans of my parents' generation were incarcerated during. Two, that there were Christian ministers and services held for the detainees where my mother became Presbyterian. Mm -hmm. My paternal grandparents practiced Jodo Shinshu Buddhism, which I know something about because I went to Japanese school at the Orange County Buddhist Church, while my maternal grandmother practiced Seicho no Ye, which Google tells me is the largest New Thought Japanese religion, and it is monotheistic, emphasizing gratitude for nature and family, as well as one universal God. I became Lutheran in college at campus ministry at UIC. I have said, and it is true, that I have known Agnes all of my Lutheran life. I was invited to come and see. I stayed for the liturgy. Our campus pastor was an extremely gifted and loving man, a quirky opera lover who was Missouri Synod by tradition and pure love in practice. After graduation and my first marriage, I was elected to serve on the Synod Council of the Southwest California Synod. I am so old in service that I remember what the name was before we changed it. Uh, I served two terms on Synod Council and two terms as the Synod Vice President. And during this time, my work as an ally and advocate for justice really started to take shape. This was in the 90s. I was one of the youngest members of my Synod Council. And when I was elected to the Church Council of the ELCA, I was always invited to the young adult gatherings by the young adult members since I was then just the other side of being a young adult. <laughs> My experience as an ally and one working for justice galvanized 
early in my church career. LGBTQ rights as a thing was never a thing in my household. One of the groomsmen in my first wedding is a member of the infamous Berkeley Three, who stood against the ELCA policy not to recommend non-celibate gay candidates for call. Because I didn't really have role models for how to be an Asian activist, I learned a lot from my African American sisters and brothers on the city council. And in particular, my brother, the Reverend Raymond LeBlanc, who said once that those of us at the table had a responsibility to represent for everyone who is not yet at the table. Being Asian American makes you distinct in both good and bad ways. I am old enough to remember that racial slurs could be pretty commonplace. After all, I was in school with kids whose dads may have served in World War II like my dad, and whose parents therefore knew the catchy phrase from the 1940s billboard, Slap the Jack with Burma Shade, that this makes us cringe now. I love Hello Kitty, and this is not because she is just so cute, but because Hello Kitty, I think, was a real cultural turning point in the United States. I mean, who among us has not wanted or known someone who wanted a Hello Kitty backpack, a phone case, or a license plate frame? Suddenly, there is a shift. Being made in Japan no longer means the cheap transistor radios. It means the high-end ultra-definition 4K Sony TVs at Costco. And with that change has also come a change in how Asians may be perceived and not. In recent years, I have seen a rise in the othering, as well as more conversation on decolonizing and claiming back what has been taken from indigenous people and those who were forced to come to this continent. In this way, I feel set apart. My grandfathers willingly immigrated from Japan, and Japan resisted any kind of colonial enterprise in the age of discovery, as it were. So this too has shaped my journey. While as an Asian American woman, I have been subject to institutional bias Part of that can be best explained by your watching everything everywhere all at once. <laughs> the choices that I did not make and the options that I felt were not available to me have shaped my path. The underlying message as the model minority of not too loud, not too much, stay humble, work harder, have hurt me everywhere except for the church. Because in the church, I was called to serve. With the help of God and angels, I served ably and with goodwill. I spoke up using my place at the table to advocate for those who were not yet there. In this way, as an Asian American Christian woman, was I different? or was of just who I am, claimed by God, and made in his image. Among the things I'm reading right now is What's Dust Next by Matt Herman. He reminds the reader that you don't really create your own mission statement, rather, you discern how you're living God's mission by living and affirming your calling. Perhaps what's best next for me is to remember an important inflection point that Pastor Jim and I shared some years ago, listening to the song Defying Gravity from Wicked. In the writing of this reflection, I consider that it is really time for me to continue to not play by the rules 